So there is a, this is where we started dialogue, dialogue uh, wherein uh, hi how have you been? So there is a, a discussion uh, that is happening between the two colleagues. So he says I'm fine. Just finished the meeting with the management. So they met maybe at cafeteria and they're discussing. So she says any big news? She uh, says yes. Management is uh, management have decided to double the sales revenue by March 2015. So uh, you can see that there is a you are in 2005 and by 2015 uh, you need to double the revenue. So she says, okay, cool, but how they will achieve it? I mean, do they have any plan? So that's what we ask, right? So that's, uh, this is the interesting conversation. Yes, she says, uh, they are launching few products down the line. First is commercial dishwasher and laundry products. So he uh, lists out those uh, products that will increase the revenue or double the revenue by 2015. So I have been appointed to prepare a detailed project plan from la launching to generating revenues. So he says, yes, I am the one who is going to launch uh, these products and basically I, I am the one who will be responsible for generating revenues. So how will you do it? She says uh, in the next slide. So I have thought of some project management tools like PERT, CPM, Gantt chart, etc. So you can see it. Uh, you can see immediately when you have been given you know, such an important task. You need to have these tools in your uh, hand, uh, and you should be able to use them. Okay. Do you have any other tool in consideration? Not yet. But can you suggest me some other tool which can be effective? So she says yes, sure. You should use Microsoft Project Management tool, and that's what we are learning right now. Okay. Will you please tell me more about it? So, oh, if it is that, then is it uh, solving my problem of, you know, providing PERT, CPM, Gantt chart, etc., right? Then, it, uh, so please tell me more about it. So that's where we come to this slide, uh, why Microsoft Project. So, Microsoft Project Professional, uh, it is a pro proven tool for tracking and detailing projects. Uh, it assists project manager in developing a plan, assigning resources to tasks, tracking progress, managing the budget, and analyzing the workload. Then it also helps identifying all of the tasks required to complete a project and the order in which they must be completed. So it helps anticipate cost to be incurred. It helps manage, manage team schedule across several projects simultaneously. It calculates and forecasts the dates and help differentiate the original schedule from the forecasted schedule. So, I mean, I can uh, go on uh, talking about, you know, uh, not the features, but actual uses. Uh, as a project manager, I have been using it. So, how it was useful to me, right? So, why using Microsoft uh, Professional is uh, uh, any tool, but more so Microsoft uh, Project uh, professional uh, is important to me is because it gives me ability to do the things faster if I have to do uh, it everything manually it will take uh, more than double the time that I will be required so with MSP if I am taking a week without MSP it will be taking me four weeks still I will be confused and I will not be sure about, you know, I may be making some manual mistakes. Uh, although there is a chance of making manual mistake also in MSP, uh, it reduces substantially. So that's where I see the use of. So uh, all the projects will have tasks uh, how they uh, are interrel interrelated so that linking can be shown. Uh, you can uh, generate a critical path, CPM. So, for which uh, if we take uh, pen and pencil it will take you know a lot of time here if you have uh, the if you give uh, your team members to do the estimation you can put those estimates in project uh, do the revisions once uh, revisions are okay and uh, the plan is in place uh, you can baseline them you can 
uh, in case there is a change request that has occurred, you can re-baseline it. So all those factors are available with Microsoft Project Professional. Uh, it gives you, in, so once you have uh, put plan in place, second thing you want to do is uh, tracking. So tracking related tools are there, so it gives you how you are doing with respect to cost. Uh, so you have, you'll just have to enter the actual percent complete task and so on, which will uh, enable the tool to provide you with the information from time to time. So let's say you have one year project and after uh, one month you want to uh, create a report. So after one month you take a uh, what all tasks are complete. You, there are already tasks uh, that are planned. They have planned schedule date. So uh, you come to know from deliverable uh, standpoint of view whether you are successful in meeting those goals for a first month. So based on that you can also extrapolate whether how we are going to or forecast uh, how you are going to do in rest of the 11 months and so on. So that's what uh, allow, uh, you know is provided by the Microsoft uh, MSP basically. So traditional tools to track projects. So traditionally we will we were using MS Excel. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't use it now. Uh, even today, uh, I might use uh, MS uh, Microsoft Excel for you know smaller scope project, wherein I don't need uh, you know too many things. Uh, I just need to see uh, few things. I mean, for one month project, uh, using uh, MSP is good, but uh, maybe I I'll, I have you know similar templates in Excel and I might use it. So before MS project, project management managers used uh, traditional Gantt charts. So what are the Gantt charts? Uh, Gantt charts are the ones wherein uh, you will get a, a graphical uh, representation of the task, how long they take and so on. So essentially uh, Gantt chart, uh, there is uh, something called running Gantt chart also. So we'll see those actually uh, when we uh, open the Microsoft project, uh, the first project in a short while from now. So and spreadsheets uh, to so Gantt chart can be drawn by hand uh, either on Excel sheet or uh, you know on paper and then transfer to Excel sheet and so on and spreadsheet to schedule and track their project activities. So challenges in using MS Excel. What what are the challenges? Project and summary level uh, data calculation is largely done manually. So. What is the challenge in this? You are doing the calculation manually. The chances of you missing one thing will uh, percolate, you know, everywhere. So uh, uh, essentially, uh, the manual mistake will lead to bigger uh, mistake in uh, getting at uh, the actual, let's say, project schedule completion date the cost for the project, the cost for the module, the co the time for the module. So everything becomes a little bit, you know, error prone. Creating and maintaining phases, task and milestone is more difficult. So you have phases, you have task, milestone, uh, tracking them becomes more difficult. And uh, the other factor is since you are using MS Excel, uh, you may change something now. You may have uh, promised something else to customers. So keeping versions, it's going to be very messy. If you think of you know big project, I think you you should stay away from MS Excel. So creating and maintaining project timelines and deadlines isn't dynamic or easy. Assigning resources and cost to take uh, cost to task isn't automated. And it is not project specific also. So uh, what it leads to is you really don't come to know uh, whether resource is over allocated automatically. You have to do and go and do the calculation for each and every individual resources. Uh, so which is a cumbersome task and again error prone task. All of the, wherever the human intervention is there, uh, there is a chances of you know, error and that could lead to you know, inaccurate information 
which is not what you want in a project. There are no automatic updates for scope, time or resource assignment. So if you change something, how it is affecting your, uh, let's say you change scope and how it is uh, affecting your time and resource assignment, right? So there is nothing automatic. You again have to do the recalculate and you know do everything manually. There are no specific tools to manage change effectively. So if you change a small thing, it is going to affect everything. Again, you will have to recalculate everything. So which is very time consuming. It is difficult to see the ripple effect of delays. So it is, you can see that any change uh, that you are going to make, if it is uh, not very effective. So uh, if there is a delay in task, right? So uh, even critical path method, for example, you will have to create your, your own critical path method in case people, uh, some of you don't know critical path method. In critical path method, you put down the uh, all the tasks that are there on the project in terms of uh, essentially uh, a chart, uh, a graph basically, okay. And there you uh, tell what are the dependencies and so on, right. And you complete that project start date and project end date, okay. So this is start and this is end date. And this is where uh, critical path uh, method, what it is going to do is essentially uh, tell you whether this task lying on the critical path or not. This is a critical path. So it tells you these are the activities to be concentrated for uh, uh, project execution from start till end. So in here uh, using your MSP it is easy. You actually just input all the task related information. It creates the graph for you. But whereas you, if you have to do it manually, if you are changing something uh, in one place, you will have to uh, change it uh, everywhere. And that's where you have, you'll have to redo the calculation and it's pretty cumbersome. I mean, just think of it, if it is a big project, uh, how it is going to be you know, cumbersome for you. There is no feature that calculates the impact of resources, resource availability. Somebody is available, not available uh, and you know, showing it to you uh, effectively. So if you have uh, let's say three, four resources, it could be easy for you. But just think of it, when you have hundreds of resources, you uh, as a project manager are likely to face more and more difficulty in managing or doing the project using MS Excel. So there are no predefined project specific uh, reports for different stakeholder. So uh, what does it mean? Uh, you, you want to pro provide uh, a report which is uh, for the customer which may be different than the report uh, that you want to provide uh, to uh, your management and doing it everything manually you may send uh, the report meant for one person one stakeholder to another uh, stakeholder which will be uh, very wrong and uh, since uh, you don't have predefined project specific reports, uh, it doesn't help you essentially. Uh, that's what uh, using uh, MS Excel is very challenging. So advantages of Microsoft uh, Pro MSP over a traditional tools, it allows users to quickly set up project phases, task and milestone which is very important. It defines task durations and relationship. Uh, what is phases, what is task, what is milestone? So all the projects that you do, anything that you do in life, right? Uh, essentially you try to uh, define it more granular, granularly or you try to divide and subdivide. So uh, if you have a, a, a bigger scope project, in that case you want to uh, 
define multiple phases so that you can manage it better. So you will have essentially, for example, if you are in uh, uh, IT project, right? So information technology related projects. So in that case, uh, you will, uh, let's say you have two years project. Usually you will come out with uh, the standard phases like uh, you will have the requirement gathering phase before that. Uh, you may have a phase that uh, essentially uh, validates whether the project should be undertaken or not, right? So uh, you may do that as one of the phase, then you have the requirement, you have design, and then you have implementation, then and so on. So those phases to set up in a Microsoft project is easier. You will see they provide you with a lot of templates and we'll use one of those templates when we actually do it. Then once you have phases, uh, you have something called work breakdown structure, WBS. Uh, it is essentially uh, in Microsoft project we are going to go by phases. So it can be based on either on phases or deliverables. So if we base it on phases, that's what we are going to do most of the times in MSP. Then you will have the work packages. So take example of uh, login case. So login is a very uh, simple straightforward in any website login, Yahoo, Google and so on or Edureka for example will have its own uh, uh, requirements. So if I am developing that login, uh, I will have uh, <coughs> uh, the task to be performed for developing that login. So the task could be uh, first design it, uh, gather the requirement, then uh, maybe um, define the success criteria, all the use cases you want to try and define it. Once that is done, requirement is done, then take it for design. Uh, you design it based on all the inputs uh, with respect to success criteria, with respect to requirements and scope, in scope, out of scope and so on. You design it. Uh, maybe you can run these uh, designs. These are all uh, iterative process. So you run these processes through uh, your project managers, your seniors, your colleagues and so on. And you identify uh, all the tasks uh, that are required to do it. So in design, uh, again you may have you know various modules to be developed in order to do your uh, login, simple login requirement, right? And uh, you may have those uh, security related module, lo actual login related module, error handling related module and so on. You try to divide and subdivide which is a tool and technique uh, that you try to use and come down to the level of the task. So task will be <coughs> you need to code for module 1, module 2, module 3, then you need to test module 1, module 2, module 3, you need to review module 1, 2 and 3 and so on. Uh, so those will become, those all become task and uh, you can also set, set a milestone. Milestone is uh, uh, essentially a task with zero duration. So milestone is something which is very important uh, uh, thing in a project. So. Uh, for example, all the phases related output can become a milestone. So the phase one of initiation uh, producing project charter can be one milestone. Phase two of creating project management plan can become a second uh, project milestone. Then uh, providing deliverables uh, or features, let's say there are uh, uh, first set of features being released in uh, the first milestone second set of features really or the rest of the set of features relates in the second milestone. So, so and so on. So those milestone are like uh, zero uh, duration uh, or zero activity, uh, zero, zero duration activity or task. So these are very important in terms of uh, analyzing how we are faring with respect to uh, your uh, project activities. Then defining the, the task duration and relationship. So once we have all those modules, uh, those tasks, right, 
modules will have task and task will have durations and task will have the there will be ta unless until you do development you ca cannot test it so that is a mandatory relationship between development and testing related uh, module right uh, or, or development task and testing task then clearly identify and allocate resources and coordinate workload so you have to see if the resource is available if he is available uh, then uh, you uh, allocate him to do the work and there could be uh, uh, development uh, team will be different uh, testing team will be different so you need to do the coordination of that workload then quickly uh, access and share relevant project information so uh, whatever is happening on the project uh, week on week basis you may have to provide the report so you have to access this information what is complete what is not complete and share the relevant project information to appropriate stakeholders so it could be your sponsor it could be your customer it could be a uh, um, subject matter experts and so on so effortlessly create custom report to keep the project team informed and aligned so these are all the things that microsoft project allows the user to do yeah ms project version timeline so in 2007 uh, we hardly have anything as per them right uh, it doesn't mean that it was not there it was there in some form so that's what it is included uh, is what so these three features of resource management schedule management and collaboration were there in 2007 in case you have older versions okay so getting started is project enables you uh, enables your organization to quickly start projects prioritize project portfolio investments and deliver the results with the intended business value so this was not there in 2007 it was introduced in 2010 uh, 2000, uh, in 2007 uh, resource management was there so delivering the results with your workforce today and plan for the future to manage surplus and deficit across a planning horizon so that feature was there schedule management was there so delivering the project on time with map for execution and delivery framework for tracking progress and managing change and that's what we are going to see all these features will be seen because we'll be covering the project professional 2013 so you can see and these are all improved ones are there then collaboration team collaboration is the backbone that supports and drives effective execution and overall pro project success so you can see that is the improved version that we have and what is new in 2013 the feature the import uh, simplify it so easily get everyone on the same version of the project professional for office 365 with no upfront infrastructure cost and an affordable subscription and predictable monthly cost so uh, it is uh, as per the pay per use kind of uh, thing that is there with office 365 right so there is no upfront infrastructure cost and uh, if you are subscribing uh, month on month uh, you know what cost it is going to be in case uh, you want to you know uh, use it over the or across the web so that's the advantage of uh, simplify it and that is the new uh, feature uh, added in uh, 2013 So MS project, uh, it is available in two different editions, project standard and project professional. So standard is the entry level desktop version which helps create and modify project schedule. Whereas professional includes all the functionality of project standard edition plus a few additional features that can be used to create and modify project schedule. So in addition, project professional can connect to project web application PWA the browser based interface of Microsoft project server so these are the advantages of project professional versus project standards how to start a new project so next slide talks about starting a new project so what you have to do is file 
I'm going to say file new and uh, from the list of available option click on blank project so you may have so many options so uh, you can create a blank project you can create from existing project uh, you can create create new from Excel workbook etc so let's go to the tool right now so this is files when I say new these are the options. I think this is much bigger and you can see it much better, right? This is a blank project, new from existing, new from Excel book, new from shared task list. Well, uh, getting started anyway, this is new uh, product. So this is software development plan. This is the one I, uh, I have opened actually, okay? Because uh, most of us are from software background and we understand this uh, pretty, uh, we can connect it very easily with that new product launch, creating budget, uh, you can see the options uh, that you have, the template options. You have Six Sigma, new business plan, market research schedule, annual report preparation, merger or acquisition evaluation, marketing campaign plan. So you can create new project based on various factors. Okay, I'm not going to do it right now because I have opened the, as I told you, uh, software development plan. So set up a new project. <coughs> so from existing project, so which we, uh, so file tab new uh, project displays option for creating a new plan. And from the list of available or, or option, you have to click on new from existing project. So which will take you to uh, the explorer, uh, the dialogs, uh, explorer dialog box and uh, in there you will be shown folder and you can go to the project from which you, uh, uh, from the project that you want to create the new project. You can go to the existing project like that. Then uh, click on task. The task has the commands for creating subtask, summary task and milestone. The task can be linked to one another and arranged into an outline. So we have already seen again we are going to see it okay so you have task uh, as you can see you can create new task so let me take that view also okay so <clears throat> essentially in here as you can see uh, you can uh, mark the percent completion uh, inspect move uh, then uh, add details add notes right and so on so task, task detail form is there uh, and you can go on creating new task I think which is not very difficult uh, considering this if I go to grand chart right you can do that So here I can add task, right? Insert task, delete task, and so on. Yeah. The task tab has commands for creating subtasks, summary task, and milestone. The task can be linked to one another and arranged into an outline. So that's what we we have seen. Then resource. The resource tab can be used for adding resources to your project assigning resources to task and leveling resources to remove over allocation. So report tab, the report tab has categories of built-in reports. You may also create visual reports, customized reports or compare to project files. Then coming to view tab, the view tab helps you select the required view. Uh, the view tab helps you to select required view. Table levels in outline, highlighting, filtering, grouping and sorting. So uh, you can go to view. Tab. Then format tab is a customized tab based on tab selected. So we'll go to form uh, as you can see. Now I'll not go back because I think uh, uh, it is redundant. We have seen sufficient enough to get the idea of it. Okay. So format as the name, you can textile, grid lines, layout, inserting column. Uh, 
Gantt chart style, which we have seen with the example. So that's how I was saying. We'll now not go back. We can see the baseline or keep baseline. We can see that uh, select the critical tag, uh, task, slack, format, etc. So that is what the format tab does. Uh, then set up a new project. So that's what we have already done. Uh, once a new project is created, click on project tab, properties, project information. It displays project information. This we have already seen, right? In the schedule from the drop down, select the project start date, enter the start date. So, which we have already done. So, I'm just showing you over here. Then select project calendar. So, usually you will select standard. This option also we have seen standard night shift 24 hours, right? So, the, the list app that appears contains the three base calendars. Uh, so, either usually we select the standard one. We have the uh, uh, assignment based on this. So, you will uh, do it. So I have doubt here. Yeah, go ahead and ask, uh, what about the holidays? I mean, how do we set up non-working days? Okay, so this is how you do it. These slides will be available to you. I believe it's going to be you know, easy for you. But uh, so let's see uh, this, this we haven't seen so far. Okay, so we'll go to click on uh, project tab properties and change working time. So it displays change working time dialog. In the name field of the exception tab, you, you can uh, type May day and then enter start date and finish date as seen. Okay. Add holidays and vacation days. Holidays, vacations, medical leave, people take, uh, take time off, keep track of network, uh, non-working time is critical for making sure your project meets its deadline. So you know that uh, this is going to happen and uh, you have to add uh, the holidays for uh, people taking time off. So you can, people taking time off, you can add that to the project calendar uh, as per the people's requirement. So project 2013 doesn't include preset holidays, but you can add them the way the same way you add, add the vacation days, which we did in you know, the previous uh, uh, exercise. So click project change work, working time and so on. In the for calendar list, click the calendar you want to change. For holidays, use the current project calendar. It has the words project calendar after its name. For vacation days, use the person's resource calendar. So that also we have seen, it has the same name as that person. So on the exception tab, add name, start date, finish date for each holiday or vacation. So that's all there is to. Now let's say you want to add repeating holidays and vacations. So again, uh, you go to project, change working time, change working time button on the project. And in the for calendar list, uh, click the calendar you want to change. So <coughs> for uh, holidays, use the current project calendar as usual for vacation days, use the person's resource calendar. Uh, on the exception tab, add name and uh, this is all same. Under recurrence pattern, okay, there is something called recurrence pattern. Pick how often the holiday or vacation day repeats. So under the range of recurrence, the first non-working date in the start box and click end after the end. So that's all there is to. Entering basic project information, uh, so you click on file tab, project information, advanced property. I have seen this, but anyway, it is simple, straightforward. Uh, it is, essentially, if you follow this project information, advanced properties, it should give you, you can change the title and author and so on, okay? 